Good morning. I'm Pastor Mary Farmer. This is Lakeview Lutheran Church. Scatterings and gatherings. There's just a couple folks here, but I know there's folks out there. So together, together on this Sunday morning, we praise God and we support each other. I have a couple of announcements. One is Sunday, January 31st. Last Sunday in January, 9 a.m. via Zoom, there's the annual meeting. If you don't have Zoom, a dial-in option is available as well, and there's details for how to attend that will be emailed and mailed out to you soon. So start thinking about January 31st. The blood drive is February 9th, and Lakeview has this wonderful, wonderful ministry. Thanks, Terry, for keeping it going. And if you are able to help, Terry Warnke would appreciate a connection with you. Donors will have their email address registered with the Red Cross and receive a $5 Amazon e-gift card. Got it? And you need appointments. Did I say everything right, Terry? It's all good. And this announcement makes me hungry because I haven't eaten breakfast. The deadline for the next drive through dinner on Friday, the 22nd, which is coming up, folks, 4.30 to 6. The deadline is tomorrow. And call the church office, speak to Laura, or leave a message if you're interested in cheesy chicken or bean enchiladas with a side of rice and beans and an oatmeal cranberry cookie from Just Bakery. Got it all? I'm ready. Okay, anything else I should be saying? We're good? This is what I've got written. If it's not written, I won't remember. We're all good. Okay, we begin our worship as we began our lives in the Christian community. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, in the name of the Mother who embraces, the Christ who gives us courage, and the Spirit energy who sends us out. Our prayer this morning is St. Francis' prayer. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring your love. Where there is injury, your pardon, Lord, and where there is doubt, true faith in you. Make me a channel of your peace. Where there is despair in life, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, only light. And where there is sadness, ever joy. O Master, grant that I may never seek so much to be consoled as to console to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your peace. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned, in giving of ourselves that we receive, and in dying that we are born to eternal life. Our gospel in this epiphany time is from John chapter 1. Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and he said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, 
Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven open and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. This is the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. We're going to have a kid's time this morning, and if you don't have any kids in your household, that's fine. Go get your, refill your coffee or whatever you're doing. But right now, I'm going to have the kids join me in doing something. You ever play follow the leader? Of course you do. That's don't even need batteries for that. Well, right now, this morning, we're going to play follow the leader. So i got to put my microphone down because you don't have a microphone. Do what I do. Are you doing it? Are you following me? We got a couple of goodies here in the sanctuary. You're doing good. You're doing good. You know I'm coming up to the steps, don't you? Do you know the sanctuary? What if I jumped over all these steps? Would you do that at home? Jump over some steps? What if I got down and rolled down the steps and ran out the door? Would you do that at home? We're playing follow the leader, right? Sometimes, sometimes kiddos and your folks that they're back in from the coffee pot in the kitchen, sometimes we have to be careful what a leader tells us to do. You can't do everything the leader says. You have to use your brain also. Your brain would say, don't be rolling down those steps. Don't be running outside. It's cold. Your brain would tell you that. Well, this morning, Jesus is calling disciples. He's calling people from different places, different experiences, and he's saying, follow me. Follow me. They trusted Jesus, and they knew that following him would lead them into community, would lead them together, lead them to God, because Jesus was of God. So be careful when you're doing, follow the leader on who you're following, and use your brain. Use your brain when you follow the leader. This week, we celebrate, we remember Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. There have been so many years when we could gather at the Capitol or maybe tune in on TV or go to different events or you had events at school. Times when celebrating Dr. King's birthday was a highlight, highlight of this January time in the middle of the winter. Downtime after Christmas, but still a celebration. We have people that we honor, people who are able to lead us into more understanding of who Dr. King was and how we did things. One of my very favorite stories about Dr. King are the times when he had a hard time, when he got confused or worried or afraid and had to get some courage about him. One of the stories that he tells, that he tells so well, is from 1956, before anybody was born, I know, but it was a long time ago. 
It was following his birthday, and he had become the leader of the bus boycott of the time when people, African descent people, had come together and decided they weren't going to ride the bus if they were not treated with equality, with respect, they weren't riding the bus until that happened and so they were walking and it was hard. And people were getting threats. And folks whose feet were already tired were getting more and more tired, but Dr. King was leading them and preaching with them on how important it was for them to be together and to stand up for their for justice and for equality. Well, he had beginning threats, violent threats against him. One night, he says, Coretta had gone to bed, the children had gone to bed, and he was alone in the kitchen. And he was very, very afraid. He made a pot of coffee and sat at his kitchen table. And he says, I was ready to give up. With my cup of coffee sitting untouched before me, I tried to think of a way to move out of the picture without appearing a coward. He felt like he just couldn't do this anymore. It was too threatening for his family, too threatening for him, and the community was threatened. In this state of exhaustion, when my courage had all but gone, he said, I decided to take my problem to God. With my head in my hands, I bowed over the kitchen table and prayed aloud. The word that I spoke to God that midnight, they're still vivid in my memory. Dr. King is praying to God and he says, I'm here taking a stand for what I believe is right. But now I am afraid that the people are looking to me for leadership. And if I stand before them without strength and courage, they too will falter. I am at the end of my powers. I have nothing left. I've come to the point where I can't face it alone. At that moment, he remembers, I experienced the presence of the divine as I had never experienced God before. It seemed as though I could hear the quiet assurance of an inner voice saying, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be by your side forever. These are the words that Dr. King heard sitting with his coffee cup at his kitchen table. Stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be by your side forever. He says, almost at once my fears began to go. My uncertainty disappeared. I was ready to face anything. He heard those words, stand up for justice, stand up for truth, and God will be at your side forever. It was just three days later that a bomb blast tore apart the front of his house. His family was safe. They managed to get out the back. But they escaped narrowly, and people began to come together to assemble in Dr. King, Coretta King's front yard. They wanted violence. They wanted retribution. They wanted people to pay for what had happened to Dr. King, to his family, to his home. And Dr. King said, I accepted the word that he, he heard that there has been this bomb blast I accepted it calmly. My religious experience at the kitchen table a few nights before gave me strength to face it. Meet hate with love, he said. 
meet hate with love. Stand up for righteousness, truth, peace, and I will be at your side forever. God's words echoed down, through, and to him in that time and through his whole life. We don't often hear about times that Dr. King was afraid, that he had to pray for courage. They had to sit in the simplest place of all, a kitchen table with a cup of coffee, and put his head in his hands and pray. We hear this morning the stories of Andrew, Peter's brother. He was somebody who had been listening to John the Baptist, and then John pointed out that Jesus truly had the message that they all needed the message of God's presence in this world. And so Andrew finds Peter and says, follow me. And Jesus says to Philip, follow me. I love this part of the story. Nathaniel is sitting under a fig tree. Isn't that a great detail? Sitting under a fig tree. Well, to the people in that community, in that tradition, in that culture, a fig tree was a place of study. It was a place of prayer. It was a place where people came together to try and understand the word of God and try and understand how their lives were involved with God's word under the fig tree. That's where I saw you, Nathaniel, Jesus says. You were under the fig tree. You were in study and you were in prayer and you were figuring out how to be a good person in this world. Well, Martin Luther King had his kitchen table. If you're at home and you have a kitchen table, put your hand up. Anybody here have a kitchen table? It's a good spot. A kitchen table is a good spot. Or any table is a good spot. The encouragement that we have from Dr. King in this simple place, simply putting his head in his hands, is that God will speak to us and bring us through. Bring us through that we too can stand for justice and stand for truth and stand knowing that love can triumph over hate. There's a wonderful song, uh, Carrie Newcomer, anybody? Carrie Newcomer fans, check her out. Google her up. Carrie Newcomer. She's somebody that I had heard of, and then this time of staying home, I've been listening to Carrie Newcomer. She has a wonderful song. A wonderful song. You Can Do This Hard Thing is the title of the song. Google her. Carrie Newcomer, You Can Do This Hard Thing. It's not easy, I know. But I believe that it's so. You can do this hard thing. It's something I've been singing to myself during these last weeks, these last months. You can do this hard thing. When we are quiet, when we can take time to listen, sitting at the table with a cup of coffee or whatever it is that gets you through, you can hear God say to you, you can do this hard thing. You can stand up for justice. You can stand up for peace in this world. You can move through hateful times to bring love to all. It's Dr. King's weekend, Dr. King's time that we carve out. See if you can find a way to connect with that message, especially now in these days when we're so worried about the violence that is creeping, that is casting a shadow, that is moving through in our city, named as one of the places where people are cautioned to be careful. You can do this hard thing because God is with you as you stand up, as you stand up for justice, and know that love can triumph over hate. 
We're going to hear arise, an invitation, an invitation to everyone to arise and to move into this place that is a place of God's power, hearing what Jesus said, follow me, being aware and alert and ready to see that presence of God's power encouraging us, follow me, you can do this hard thing and arise. community. Though distanced from one another, we connect as God's people. We ask that our hearts, our imaginations, and intentions for good unite seeking God's mercy and justice for our world, our country, our community. We hold those who are suffering with COVID and their families I give thanks that my sister is improving in her struggle with this virus. We pray for John Fry, for Lynette, for my friend Jesse, with prayerful intentions for their healing. We pray for people whose fears and illnesses are more interior, that they too can feel the light and the power of God's healing presence in their lives. We pray for those in law enforcement, that they will be safe in these days and that they too can be people with equity. Bring justice to our country. Raise up leaders with integrity and clarity of intention will honor and speak with truth as we begin to move toward listening dialogue and peace in our lives. Hold Donald Trump and his family into their future, giving them a path that is righteous. Bless Joe Biden and Kamala Harris as they come into power, into equitable power, into just power in this country, power for all. Help us to be people who realize that that power can be for each other. Make us aware of those who hunger for justice, needing food, shelter, safety, 
health, and employment. Give renewed energy for the ministry and ministers of Lakeview so that the gospel is preached and lived with integrity. We confess our belief together. I believe that we can, with the power of our able God, influence the events which surround us. I believe that we are so bound together that despite races in war and division, brotherhood and sisterhood are still possible. I believe that there is an urgent need to overcome oppression and violence without resorting to oppression and violence. I believe we need to discover a way to live in peace, a way which rejects aggression and retaliation the foundation of this way is love. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. I believe that right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil that seems to triumph. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Amen. We remember the gentle patience of Dr. King as well as his fierce strength for the good. We ask your blessing, good God, for the wisdom to be your people in your holy and beautiful world. Amen. Peace be on you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Love each other.